so you know i have to i have to start out by just first kind of putting the disclaimer out there that if we you know obviously amrit we make a product we we sell a product right and our product does have um you know an fda approved indication um so that does limit which acromegaly patients you can potentially use the product in so i'll kind of just start by saying that that kind of disclaimer but in general, in the U.S., you know, we're under the brand name Mycapsa, and um, what's a little bit unique about the Mycapsa product is that it's really the first and only FDA-approved oral somatostatin receptor analog, um, you know, and, and, and what the FDA has indicated us specifically for is for the treatment of acromegaly in patients that have responded to or tolerated an injectable form of the somatostatin analogs in the past. So that would be other products like octreotide or lanreotide that are given typically as a monthly injection. So that's kind of the, the space that we're sitting in. And that kind of answers part of your question too, which is, you know, the current products that are out there octreotide injectables, so that's like the octreotide LAR or lanreotide, um, the somatulin product, um, you know, those are considered to be first-line medical treatments after surgery. So typically a patient comes in, once they're diagnosed, then there's an evaluation of, of tumor um, and to see, you know, the tumor burden of that patient. And they typically will then proceed to, you know, surgical removal um, and then look to see if, you know, with removal, if they can um, achieve biochemical control, which is typically measured by, by physicians using something like IGF-1, the, you know, insulin-like growth factor one, that's kind of our biomarker. Um, and if the patients can then achieve that biochemical control, um, you know, they may not need medical therapy based on the physician's um, review of the case. Um, for patients that are not able to achieve that biochemical control, then you start to revert to medical medical therapies. And that's where those first line injectables, octreotide and lanreotide come into play. Um, now those have been, especially octreotide, you know, they've been here for decades, right? Um, and so that is where, um, the idea of my capsule was born because, um, you know, if we've been doing the same thing for a couple of decades, how can we potentially give patients another option? And there are patients that just don't want to do injectables, um, whether it be for personal convenience factors or travel for the injections, they, there's a needle phobia, Potentially, you know, they they just want something different because they're still having breakthrough symptoms, you know, which is common in acromegaly. Um, and so that's why, you know, we feel that my capsa fills an important need in being able to provide another option, an oral route for these patients um, as well. And so um, there are other treatment options outside of the typical injectable somatostatin analogs or orally like my capsa that you can go down, but they tend to be more second line treatments based on patients who are having limited response to traditional medical therapies. Um, so you can use things like dopamine agonists um, in like cabergoling in patients that are, um, you know, more mild disease or you might go down the path further to other treatments that are focused more on, um, you know, symptom control um, as well. Um, but typically the first line treatments are the injectables. Last line treatment tends to be, you know, radiation therapy, try to spare that for, for the majority of patients. Um, and so that's kind of where we are today with, you know, the current kind of landscape of, of treatment options. So there really hasn't been anything new in quite some time for acromegaly.